Hey everyone, uh, just want to make a quick video on how to virtually extract a tooth. Uh, this is covered in a lot of other tutorials, lots of people have covered this, uh, but I figured just a short little, maybe one or two minute long video would be helpful just to specify or to focus just on this. Um, so anyway, uh, I do apologize in, in, uh, in advance for any sort of background noise. I apologize for just the circumstances I'm in right now, so uh, hopefully this is uh, still uh, useful for you. So anyway, in Mesh Mixer, I've opened up a, a model, and we're going to go ahead and just virtually extract this lateral incisor here. Uh, to do so, I'm going to click on the Select button, or just press the S key, which is the shortcut. Now this uh, selection area, I can highlight, hit Escape, and it clears it away. Um, I can dial it down and smaller, or I can even use the bracket buttons on my keyboard to make it bigger and smaller. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the tooth. Uh, depending on what you're doing, uh, you may or may not to be real perfect. If you're extracting the tooth, going to print the model to make a Ponic space, or if you're doing this for uh, an implant plan and you want to be able to um, make the plan so that the guide tube extends down into the edentulous area, which I certainly recommend, uh, these are the kind of times we might do this. So um, generally speaking, it's better to err on the side of leaving a little bit of the tooth. That way you don't ax I mean. On the tissue side, it's not a big deal, but you don't want to accidentally virtually extract an adjacent tooth or a part of it because then uh, whatever you try to fit in there may not fit because you haven't actually extracted that tooth or part of the tooth. So this looks pretty good to me. Uh, it's not perfect. This little guy down here, this little uh, error over here, I don't want that. So I'm going to hold the shift button and I'm just going to click and it'll undo. So if I highlighted all this, once again, shift, I can deselect. Okay, so I feel like I've got a pretty good area, and I, most people would just go ahead and proceed with the extraction now. I like to try and smooth this edge. You can see that it's jagged because every surface is made of triangles. If I press the W button, I can actually see the triangles, the mesh that creates the surface, and that's why you always end up with this sort of jagged area. Okay, and there's an area. I'm going to turn off this a little bit, makes it a little too dark. I'm going to deselect this area. Didn't mean to get the adjacent tooth here. And then make sure I get that little triangle. Okay, so now I wanna have a nice smooth extraction. So I'm just gonna press the B button, which is also, I believe, under, I'm so used to just pressing the button. Um, yeah, under modify, smooth boundary. So now it's gonna give me a nice smooth line. If I, if I actually go so far as to press the B button, oops, didn't mean to do that. Hit the W button. You can see that it's actually re, retrying and remeshing this area so that it can get a nice smooth transition. Okay, that's not necessary to click on that. I'm just kind of showing that for demonstration purposes. If I click Enter, now I've got this nicely sm smoothed out edge. Um, and, you know, it looks pretty nice. So well, the next big step is just to hit Edit, Erase, and Fill, or the F button, and it's going to subtract out the teeth. Now, you have the ability to just hit accept and be done with it, um, and it's extracted. Now, it, most of the time, I like to, uh, we'll come back to this little red dot in a moment, but most of the time, I like to actually create sort of an ovate pontic site. So I'm going to hit Control Z twice so I can get back into this, and I'm going to adjust these last two scale uh, dials, the scale and the bulge. I tend to bring the scale close to all the way down, and the bulge almost all the way down and now it's really just sort of a you know tinker around with these if you want to go super deep you can see how far that extends obviously that's you know definitely overkill but you can see that you've got the ability to truly manipulate how ovate you want this to be you know if you're going to be creating a, some sort of um, flipper or Maryland bridge or whatever uh, you know uh, an immediate temporary you might want it to be um, a little more um, uh, ovate and so it extends down in there so anyway you know pick your poison choose your own adventure if you will so when I'm done I hit accept and watch what happens along the edges you're gonna see a little bit of a refinement that occurs okay it's almost rough honestly that's printable I don't work it's not really something to worry about but if you do want to go the extra step you can come over to the sculpt tools about the only tool I, or not the only, but the majority of the time if I'm using the Sculpt, it's just this robust, smooth tool. You don't need it real strong. 50% is probably more than adequate. Once again, the bracket buttons, or this little size dial, and I just tap. 
I'm not I'm not clicking and dragging because if I do, I can potentially. I mean, that actually worked all right. But you do have the potential to overdo your smoothing. Again, this is an area I don't want to overdo because I'm not extracting this tooth, and I don't want whatever I make to be fitting as though I had extracted it. This doesn't have to be perfect, but here we go. I hit escape just to get out of that sculpting tool. Don't have to accidentally click on something, and we're good. Now, when I adjusted that, that little red dot right here went away. If that was still there, I would just go to Analyze, Inspector, and it would show me where any flaws. There is technically a flaw because it's an open model, and it's showing me one. Do not hit Auto Repair All or click on this globe because it's going to try to close this off. It's going to look like a mess. Um, I have other tutorials walking you through how to base this model if you decide you actually want to print a model here, how to make this a printable model. For now, it's perfectly fine for doing guided surgery design so you can get your guide tube to seat in there and whatnot. So anyway, I hope this video is useful. Uh, please let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. Bye for now.